infrared non-contact thermometers. Now you've probably heard of these before, you might even own one, yet there's a lot of misconceptions about them, so I want to take a moment to clear those up to help you make the right decision on the type of infrared thermometer you need. Whether it's physically impossible to get a contact measurement, or you're just moving fast and need a fast tool, infrared thermometers are great. A lot of people, though, think they're compromising on accuracy when they use one. But a Fluke IR, even this little 62 Mini, is accurate to within a degree. That's not much of a compromise. The only thing is, you have to know how to use it. And for that, you need to understand two things. Distance to spot ratio and emissivity. Now bear with me, there will be a little science here, but I promise not to get too technical. First up, distance to spot ratio. Wait, back up, I wanna make a quick point. This red laser is the laser targeting system. It only is there to help you aim. It actually has nothing to do with the temperature reading at all. Got it? So distance to spot ratio. This particular tool, the 62 mini infrared thermometer, has a distance to spot ratio of 10 to one. That means if I'm 10 inches away, I'm reading a one inch spot. If I back up to say six feet away, I'm now measuring about a seven inch circle. I'm getting an accurate but average temperature across that spot. That's important to understand if the temperature of what you're measuring varies across those seven inches or 27 inches or whatever. If you need to measure just that one inch spot, then you need to be about 10 inches away. If you can't get that close, you're gonna to wanna to look at something like the Fluke 570 series precision infrared thermometers with an awesome distance to spot ratio of 60 to one. When you're shopping for infrared thermometers, it's really important to know what types of measurements you want to take. Fluke has a lot of options, so you don't have to buy more tool than you need. As you're shopping, be sure to check out the distance to spot ratio in the specs. Another important element of accurate testing is emissivity. Basically, the material you point your thermometer at can affect the accuracy of your measurement by how much infrared energy it emits, zero being the lowest and one being the highest. So here's a shiny surface where we have a contact thermometer attached for an accurate temperature reading. In order to use this infrared thermometer on this reflective surface, I've wrapped a piece of non-reflective tape, like black electrical tape, on the surface. Here on the black tape, my infrared thermometer reads only a 0.3 degree difference from the contact thermometer. That's pretty accurate. But here, on the shiny pipe, it reads an eight degree difference, just because of the reflection off the pipe. That sounds complicated, I know, but don't let it throw you, because most of you will be putting your thermometer at a nice matte surface like this. Something painted or oxidized with higher emissivity. The 62 mini infrared thermometer is preset for this type of material, with a typical emissivity of 0.95. As long as you don't have to get a temp reading off a mirrored surface, this should be fine. If you do need to read reflective surfaces, then you're gonna need an infrared thermometer with adjustable emissivity. The Fluke 561 infrared and contact thermometer adjusts between three preset emissivity levels, low, medium, and high. If you need to be really precise, the Fluke 566 adjusts all the way from 0.1 to one in tenth of a degree increments. Again, it's important to know what you're going to be measuring and in what circumstances to be sure you get the tool that's right for the job. Fluke infrared thermometers have unbeatable accuracy when they're used correctly. Now if you've narrowed it down to a few infrared thermometers that'll meet your distance to spot ratio and emissivity needs, the next thing you wanna look for is good old fashioned durability. Don't go by looks. Some guns are so bulky you think they're tough, but then one falls off the ladder and you're out shopping for a new one. Fluke tools are built to survive without a lot of extra weight to carry around. If you're looking for a rugged, reliable tool, you just can't beat a Fluke. For Fluke, this is Chip Wade.